Sync it up. Take one. Boom. Hey everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk and take a look at, actually I should say, how many? 36 essential hotkeys for Photoshop. Now these are just like hotkeys that I went through and realized I'm using all the time. And if you're using Photoshop, they're hotkeys that I think you should definitely know. These things are like muscle memory to me as I'm jumping through Photoshop. Sometimes in my other tutorials, I even use them and they're just right there in my head. So like automatically, I forget to even mention what the hotkey is. Uh, so we're going to take a look at this. Uh, I also have mounted the camera. Now, some of you noticed I have kind of a wobbly desk and my monitor really jiggles. It's a huge monitor, so it moves back and forth. My desk has really long, really skinny legs. That looks really, really bad when I do that. My desk has really long legs, um, so it shakes a little bit. So I mounted the camera. Thank you for those comments. Um, and what else? Oh, you can support tutvid.com. A little link will appear right up here in that part of the video. I'm selling a course all about like advanced retouching in Photoshop. It really helps support the site if you pick up a copy of it. If not, there's tons of free tutorials. Don't worry. Don't get yourself upset about not being able to support or whatever. Whatever. So let's get into this tutorial right here and start talking about 36 essential hotkeys for working in Photoshop. All right, number one, we want to know how to create a new document. Command or Control N, it brings up the new document dialog box, obviously much faster than going File New every time you want to create a new document. That can be really helpful. Creating a new layer, Command Shift or Control Shift and the letter N will bring up the new layer dialog box where you have to give it a name. You can also do things like say, hey, use previous layer to create a clipping mask, add a color, uh, blend mode, no opacity right off the bat. Um, you can hit OK and you can see you've got a new layer. But sometimes when you're working, you just want to throw a new layer in there like that instantaneously. If you want to do that, the hotkey is Command Shift Option or Control Shift Alt and the letter N, and it bypasses that dialog box so you don't have to worry about that. Now you can duplicate any layer at any time. Let's just duplicate this curves adjustment layer to add more contrast. We can duplicate it by hitting Command or Control and the letter J. You can see we've doubled up our contrast, our curves adjustment layer here. You can also, by the way, with this effect, use like the lasso tool or any selection tool and select a piece of a layer and hit command or control J and you can see here we've moved this bit of the image up onto its own layer so you can also do that with any of the selection tools so that's kind of cool now if you want to select multiple layers you can select the topmost layer and then move down to like let's say we want to select everything except the original background image move down to this curves layer hold down the shift key and click and it will select that layer and every layer in between so you select all these layers at once. Now, if you just want to select like this layer and the channel mixer layer, you can select this layer, hold down command or control and select out here on this part of the image or the image, the layer. Don't select the thumbnail for the layer out here. And you can see we just grabbed those two layers. We can throw like the background layer in there and maybe the top curves adjustment as well. And then you could do something like, you know, group these or duplicate them or reduce the opacity or I'm, I'm sorry, get rid of the visibility of them. Or I mean, you could reduce the opacity as well. Opacity as well. There's a bunch of stuff you can do, um, but just know there's a bunch of different ways you can select layers. You can either select them in a straight line or just kind of these individual layers as you need them. Now, uh, let's say we want to merge layers together you can merge layer two with layer one this, this command is just like merge below or merge downward or something or what is it here over in layers we have yeah, merge down note the hotkey command or control e so command or control e we merge layer one with layer two now what if we want to merge all of our layers up to a new layer instead of just merging a couple layers oh by the way i should say you can actually select uh, just a few layers like this and hit command or control e and you will merge all of those layers into one layer as well you can see it kind of changes is the complexion of the image a little bit because we're messing around with an adjustment layer. You can merge all of your layers up to a new layer by holding holding down Command Shift Alt. I'm sorry, Command Shift Option or Control Shift Alt and the letter E. You're going to see it's merging all of our stuff up to a well, in this case, not a new layer. The reason it didn't do this is because this layer uh, is a transparent layer. If I do something like just grab the brush tool and draw a black line across it, and then Command Shift Option or Control Shift. Alt E, you can see it merges all of these lower layers up to a new layer. Um, we don't really need to do that. I'm going to undo that. 
we can group multiple layers together. So let's say we want to group all of our adjustment layers into a layer group. Select the top adjustment, hold down shift, select the bottom adjustment, and use the hotkey command or control G. It groups those layers up. We can just now name this adjustments. If we want to ungroup it, the hotkey to ungroup is command shift or control shift and the letter G, and you will ungroup the layers that you had grouped together. Now you can also duplicate a single or multiple layers. Let's say we want to duplicate this entire black and white effect. We can select all the layers, hold down the Alt or Option key, and drag the group of layers up. You can see it doubles up those layers. You can also do it, obviously, with a single layer. We just grab this Curves Adjustment, hold down Alt or Option, drag it upward, and we duplicate that layer and drop it in place. I'm going to delete, uh, get rid of that layer just by hitting the uh, Delete or Backspace key. Hey guys, I just want to take a quick break from going through these hotkeys. Do you follow me yet on Snapchat? My username is tutvid.com. Yes, that is tutvid.com, not just regular tutvid. Somebody else got that. Uh, but you can do that, or I'll pop a graphic up here on the screen, probably somewhere right about here. And you can scan that or screenshot or do whatever you like with it. Make sure you follow me over on Snapchat. I do all kinds of behind-the-scenes stuff and just have some fun with it. It's a little bit of a different side of me than I post on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, anything like that. So, if you're on Snapchat, I'd love to see you. Now, when you have contents on a layer, let's take layer two here and draw some pixels on it. I'll draw, I don't know, I, you know, I'll get the custom shape tool, actually, and we'll just make this, this big sort of do not enter thing. If we want to load this as a selection, you can hold down command or control and click on the layer thumbnail. You can see it loads that shape as a selection. Pretty cool. So we could do all kinds of things with a selection now. You can deselect when you have a selection active like this by hitting command or control D. I cannot emphasize how important this hotkey is. One of the first hotkeys I ever learned in Photoshop, and I still use it. It is a hotkey I use, I would say, just about every single time I go into Photoshop, whether I'm working on a website design, a UI design, whether I'm retouching a photo, like no matter what it is, I'm always selecting and deselecting. And the alternative to using the hotkey is going select, deselect, which takes a bunch of time, way more time than you hitting Command or Control D. Boom, deselect. Now, if you want to select everything in your document, which is really just load the entire document as a selection, Command or Control A loads everything as a selection. You can also go select all, and you can see Command or Control A is, in fact, the hotkey. But we're focused on the hotkeys, right? Command or Control A to select, and we'll just deselect that using our newfound knowledge of the deselect hotkey. Now, when you make a selection like that, sometimes you'll make a selection, and you'll deselect it and realize, oh, no, I need that selection again. Well, you can use the hotkey Command, Command Shift D or Control Shift D, and that will reload your last loaded selection. So that can be really, really helpful if you accidentally deselect a very complex selection um, and you need to get it back real quick. So I'm going to deselect this. I'm going to load my little X marks the spot or whatever, do not enter sign, uh, crosshair as a, it's not really a crosshair. Uh, I'm going to load that as a selection. I'm going to shut that layer off though. I want to select everything except this. So w what I can do is simply load this as a selection and then inverse my selection by hitting Command Shift or Control Shift I. That will select everything else. So if I do something now like add a curves layer adjustment, go to the red channel and boost up red, you're going to see that red goes everywhere except that little area that we didn't have selected because really we selected everything except the shape of this graphic. I'm going to get rid of this stuff. Let's talk about the selection tools here. So when you're using like the rectangular marquee tool and you drag out a selection, you can always add to the selection by holding down the shift key and drawing out another selection. You can see we're sort of building off of the selection. If you hold down the alt or option key, you can cut away parts of the selection that you have created. So very quickly, you can go in and chop and hack and, and add and subtract to make the perfect selection. Another cool thing is, let me just deselect this, when you're dragging out a selection, before you commit the selection and let go with your mouse button, you can hold down your space bar and move your selection around so you can sort of get the perfect selection. So if I need to select around his lips and get a very tight selection, I can keep messing around and moving my selection just right so when I commit and let go with my mouse, I get a selection that I actually want. I'm going to deselect this as well. As you go on using Photoshop, you may start you know, using different foreground and background colors, and then you realize, you know what, I need to get back to my foreground and background colors, the original default foreground and background colors. Hit the letter D. That takes you back to black and white. And then sometimes when you're working, you have you know, two wildly different foreground and background colors, and you need to switch between them. Maybe you're painting something. Maybe you're masking something. You need to go back and forth from black to white. Just hit the letter X, and that flips your foreground and background color. Again, much faster than going and selecting the default swatches icon or the little arrow flippy back and forth icon. Just the letter D to get the default colors and the letter X to exchange the foreground and background colors. 
Now, let's say we've selected, I don't know, one of these sort of salmon colors, and we have a selection here, and we have the selection up on a new layer. How do we fill our selection with our foreground color? Well, the hotkey, well, you could go edit, fill, and go through that rigmarole, but the hotkey is alt or option, uh, option delete on the Mac. It's probably the easier way to say it. Option delete on the Mac or Alt Backspace on the PC. So Option Delete and we fill with the foreground color. Now you can do Command Delete to fill with the background color. That will be Control Backspace on the PC. So Option Delete or Alt Backspace, Command Delete, Control Backspace, depending on whether or not you're using Mac or PC. That's how you fill with either the foreground or the background color. Now I should mention that if you don't have a selection, you can use this command to just fill that entire layer. So Option Delete and I fill the entire layer with that pink or salmon color. And I go like blend mode, soft light, and now I've given my entire image kind of this color overlay. I don't really want that. In fact, I'll delete everything there, and we're back to our image being the way it is. So when we're using the brush tool, if I grab the brush tool, I can quickly sample new colors. Let's say this was still the color version of this image, and I'm painting, and I want to sample like this, this blue out here. I can hold down the Alt or Option button, and I can sample colors out of my image, paint with them, and maybe sample a different color, paint with that, and maybe sample another color here, and paint with that. So holding down the Alt or Option key while you are using the brush tool will allow you to quickly change your foreground color and sample colors from anywhere here in your Photoshop document. Another cool brush hotkey and a very essential tip, instead of right clicking to change the size of your brush tool or the hardness of your brush tool, you can instead just use the bracket keys, those little bracket keys to the to the right, excuse me, of the P button on your keyboard. You can hit the right bracket to make your brush bigger, the left bracket to make your brush smaller. You can hold down shift and use the left bracket to make your brush softer or shift and the right bracket to make your brush harder. So there's a very hard brush, there's a very soft brush. Now that we have this artwork up on this uh, new level, layer, we can talk about free transforming. In fact, maybe I'll just delete this. Let's get a, a legitimate shape here. I'm going to choose a different shape, something that I know what it is. Let's use a musical note here, all right? So we're going to use this musical note. I'm going to drag it out, and we have this piece of artwork. What if we're looking at this piece of artwork, and we decide, you know what? We need to transform it. Well, Command or Control T brings us to the free transform, where we can stretch this, make it smaller, make it larger, stretch it out, make you do all kinds of crazy stuff. That we can generally free transform our piece of artwork. And by the way, if you just have an entire layer that's an image, like the background layer, you can free transform the whole layer. Uh, side note to that, I should add that you have to unlock the background layer before you can actually transform the background layer, and unlocking the layer is as simple as double-clicking on it. Um, but let's talk about this free transform. Uh, an, an essential hotkey when you start actually free transforming is holding down the shift key when you scale an object. That forces the object to remain proportionate. So instead of being able to make the music note all wacky, hold down the shift key and it will constrain proportions. Now you can also hold down the Alter Option key and that will zoom and scale your image from wherever you have the center point placed. So if I place the center point down here on the music note, you're gonna see that our image is gonna scale down toward that center point and up away from that center point. So holding down the Alter Option key, and you can, you, by the way, you don't have to hold down Shift when you do that. I can do this and I can, I can do it all out of proportion, but by adding the Shift key while I'm holding down the Alter Option key, we constrain proportion and we scale to or from wherever that center anchor point is located. All right, so now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and talk about changing image size. Command Option or Control Alt I will bring up your image size dialog box. And in here you can go from, well, I, I don't wanna upload an image that's 5,000 pixels wide to Facebook, I want 2048, right? That's the magic Facebook width. So you can go in here and quickly change your image size, upsize, downsize, whatever you want. Command Option I, Control Alt I on the PC. Let's go back down here to our background layer. I'm going to actually get rid of the music note for a second. Let's go back to the background layer and hit Command or Control M to bring up curves. Um, now, it's not the hotkey. That's just kind of an aside hotkey. When you're working with something like this, and let's just go crazy with the curves in here, and let's say we really butcher the image and mess it up, and we realize, ah, this is not really what I was going for. In virtually every dialog box in Photoshop, and I mean every dialog box that I can think of, you can hold down the Alt or Option key, and your Cancel button will switch to a Reset button, which will reset the dialog box to the default of that dialog box. Very, very helpful, so you don't have to go and get rid of everything and open up a dialog box all over again. You can stay right there in the dialog box, Alt or Option, boom, reset, and get back to work. Super fast, super easy. So let's say we're working here in Adobe Camera Raw, and we're opening up a raw photo in Photoshop. You can just hit open image and it opens a pixel based image. But if you hold down the shift key, you can switch your open image button to an open object button. Open object will open your photo as a smart object in Photoshop and allow you, 
well, it's going to ask me to update all kinds of stuff, so I'm not actually going to open it. But when you open a smart object, you can always double click on the thumbnail of the image and it'll bring you back to the camera raw editor so you can continue working on it in camera raw even after you've done a bunch of retouching in Photoshop. It can be very helpful. Open an object as a smart object in camera raw. And by the way, I should add, if you just want your images to always open as smart objects, you can always click on your little workflow output settings here and tick on open in Photoshop as smart objects. Hit OK. And you can see you automatically have an open object button. And at this point, if you ever just wanted to open an image, hold down shift and it will open it as not a smart object. So now I like typically to keep it as default open a smart object. And if I just want to open the image, well, you guessed it. I go ahead and hold shift and just open the image. I'm going to close out Adobe Bridge. And I want to talk about navigating between multiple open documents here in Photoshop. I only have one document open, so I'm going to go, well, I want to go back to Photoshop. Number one, I go image, duplicate, and we're just going to duplicate one uh, image here. You know what, actually, we'll do two, just, just for the sake of uh, what I'm going to do here. So you can see we have three tabbed documents. I can hold down Control Tab, and this is Control Tab whether you're on Mac or PC. Control Tab, and it's going to take me to the next image. Now, it looks like nothing's different because the image is the same exact image, but watch up here. You can see the Active tab. There we go. We, we go to the next image, Control Tab, Control Tab, go to the next image. Now you can do Control Shift Tab to go to the image before in your tabbed lineup. So that's a nice little hotkey when you're moving around multiple images in Photoshop. You're navigating from one image to the next to the next, and then you want to go back, 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 back. And you, you can just quickly jump between open images in Photoshop, and it's really super easy. Let's create a new layer here. And remember we talked about um, the selection tools earlier, getting a perfect square, uh, things like, oh no, we didn't actually talk about getting a perfect square. But here's how you get a perfect square with a selection tool or a shape tool. Just like with everything else, the shift key, think of it as the proportion hotkey. When you're free transforming, it keeps things in proportion. And also when you're dragging out something like this wonderful square, wonderful square, um, <laughs> you get a perfect square square, not a rectangle, not any kind of other shape. Uh, the same thing goes for the elliptical tool. So even the elliptical marquee tool or the ellipse tool, but let's just do the elliptical marquee tool. You can see when I drag it out, I get all kinds of ovals. I hold down the shift key and I get a perfect circle. Incredibly helpful when you're creating shapes, when you're uh, creating selections. Just use that shift key. It's so insanely helpful. And just like with free transform, if you hold down the alt or option key, you can draw your circle or square out uh, from the middle. So the, the, the circle or square, the middle of that circle or square or rectangle, whatever, will be right where you begin clicking. So typically, where you begin clicking is going to be like that top left corner, if you will, of the square or circle. Well, by holding down alter option, you make it the middle. Now, once you've done a bunch of things in Photoshop, you probably will realize, well, this doesn't look all that great. I want to begin undoing. Um, in fact, what I'll do, I'll drag out a bunch of squares here on this layer. And let's say we want to undo. Well, of course, Command or Control Z, as you can see, un will, do will undo things. But the problem is you hit Command or Control Z multiple times. And what happens is it undoes a step, but then it redoes that step. Okay. So in order to undo multiple times, you need to do what's called stepping backward. And it's called stepping backward because you're stepping backward in your history panel. You step back, 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 like that, up your history uh, panel. So note the hotkey, Command-Alt, or, com or Command-Option, because I'm on the Mac, but it would be Control-Alt-Z on the PC. So you can go Command or Control-Z to undo, and then Command or control Alt or Option and the letter Z to undo multiple times. You can see we can undo all of that stuff that we went and did just a moment ago. So if we go ahead and drag out some type and type whatever guy in car, that's fine. And we realize we like the type. You, instead of going up here and hitting the check icon every single time, remember you already have your hands on the keyboard. It's so easy to use the hotkey. Command return. This would be control enter on the PC and you commit your type change in a snap. Now, if you don't like creating a nice fancy black and white like this, you can actually desaturate excuse me, an image in a hurry by simply selecting the layer you want to desaturate, like the background layer. It's got all of our color on it. I'm going to hide the text layer for a second. And use the hotkey Command-Shift. This would be Control-Shift on the PC. Command-Shift-U, and it will desaturate your image. Now, obviously, you can see this desaturated version. This isn't really like your photo quality desaturation. This is a desaturation you use when you just quickly need to get rid of all the color, maybe take a look at the lighting of the image or something like that, it's not really what you're going to want to use for a final finished black and white. In fact, if I just undo that and check out the black and white that we applied with adjustment layers, you can see how much more rich and deep and sharp and contrasty this black and white is with these adjustment layers. 
Now, if you want to zoom into your image to check out some details or zoom out, Command or Control and the plus and minus keys, as you may well expect, allow you to zoom in and out very, very quickly. And by the way, when you do zoom in, you can just hold down the space bar and switch any tool that you're using to the hand tool and quickly navigate around uh, your image. Very helpful indeed. In fact, when we zoom in, you can see they did some retouching here underneath his nose and did not really cover it up all that well. All right, let's zoom back out. Now, if you're looking at an image and you want to quickly just zoom it to fit the open area of your screen, Command or Control and the number zero will zoom your image as big as it can get uh, but still allow you to see every pixel there available on your screen. So you can see it doesn't zoom as wide as it could because if it went that wide, it would cut off bits of the top and bottom. So it just zoomed until the top and bottom fit perfectly, and uh, there we go, we have it. Now if I move this, uh, this little uh, bar way out like this and hit Command or Control-0 again, you can see now it fits side to side because, well, I messed up my interface. Not only can you zoom to fit what you can see, but you can also just zoom straight to 100% by hitting Command or or control and the number one. And by the way, any of these effects you can get by simply double clicking on like the that the, the corresponding tool, excuse me, in the toolbar. So double clicking on the hand tool will uh, force your image to fit on the screen. That command or control zero, and double clicking the magnifying glass will automatically zoom you to 100%. So that's just like a little sort of side tip to the hotkeys. I'm going to quickly use the hotkey we talked about before, image size, command, option, or control, alt, and the letter I to knock this image down to 2048 pixels wide because I want to talk about saving this image for the web. So we have some save for web options as far as exporting, export as, and also save for web legacy. The hotkeys, you kind of have to twist your fingers up a little bit, but they can be really helpful. Control, shift, alt, or command, shift, option, S. This is the legacy, the old style save for web dialog box. You can choose JPEG, uh, GIF, PNG8, PNG24, uh, and you can go ahead and save it. By the way, this is probably the dialog box you want to use if you're creating a, an animated GIF here in Photoshop. It's just, I don't know, I found it just much easier to export actual animations and not have things go awry. Um, so I still use it when I'm exporting animations, and sometimes just force of habit, I fall back and use it. It really, it works fine, um, but we do have a newer export as, and that is Command Shift Option or Control Shift Alt W, and this will bring up Export As, and this has all kinds of advantages because you can resize your image right here when you export it, so you don't have to resize your PSD, for instance, if you're working with a huge PSD and you don't want to like knock the size way down, but you want all that great quality, resize it here on Export uh, Export As. You can embed metadata, convert color space, embed your color profile, change your format, change your quality, all that good stuff. You can also export multiple multiple versions of the image if you're working with responsive uh, web design and responsive UIs and things like that. So you can export multiples if you're exporting like a button image or whatever, uh, the navigation bar, a background, whatever it may be. Export all, boom, choose where you want to save it. It's that easy. Now, aside for saving from the web, you may also just want to save an image out of Photoshop, um, not maybe as a JPEG, but maybe you just want to save your PSD. Command Shift S or Control Shift S will allow you to save as. So that's going to allow you to pick a new place on your hard drive. Boom, choose to save it there. You can also, from your format dropdown, choose something like JPEG, and you're going to get just a very high quality, not really all that optimized JPEG, not really something you want to share on the web, but maybe you're exporting a JPEG for printing. Um, maybe you should export a TIFF for printing or consult your printer to see what they want. Um, but if you're printing a JPEG, you're probably better off exporting a JPEG uh, this way than through export as or a save for web type dialog box situations. You can do it here. There's also a plethora of other file types you can export and save as. Um, and obviously, as you're working through your document, you can just quickly hit Command or Control S to save at any time. That's kind of a no-brainer. And last but not least, closing a document in Photoshop. So closing a document but not closing all of Photoshop is Command or Control W. So you can say, would you like to save changes? No, I don't really care about that. And my other open document, Command or Control W, and no, I don't really care about that either. And we're left just with this original image. So for 36 essential hotkeys in Photoshop that at least I think you really ought to know, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvig.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Typography is a beautiful group of letters, not a group of beautiful letters. That's a quote by Steve Byers. Are you a graphic designer? Are you infatuated with type? If so, leave a comment below and share your absolute favorite typeface right now. 
Also, hit the like button for this video, subscribe to my channel so you never miss another tutorial that I have to share with you guys, and sign up for my newsletter. I'll send you a Photoshop course, 30 tips and tricks on working faster in Photoshop. You're absolutely gonna love it. And also, you can follow me on Snapchat, on Instagram, on Twitter, and of course, on Facebook.